Bishop Thomas Paprocki of Springfield, Illinois, recently reiterated Senator Dick Durbin should not receive Holy Communion because of his support for abortion, highlighting the senator's recent vote against the pain capable unborn child protection act the pro-life bill would stop abortions after five months of pregnancy the point at which babies can feel pain senator durbin was one of 14 catholic senators who voted against it in january durbin resides in bishop paprocki's springfield diocese in a statement the springfield bishop wrote in April 2004, Senator Durbin's pastor said he would be reticent to give Senator Durbin Holy Communion because his pro-abortion position put him outside of communion or unity with the church's teachings on life. My predecessor, now Archbishop George Lucas of Omaha, said that he would support that decision. I have continued that position. Bishop Pabraki continues, this provision is intended not to punish, but to bring about a change of heart. Senator Durbin was once pro-life. I sincerely pray that he will repent and return to being pro-life. We are joined now by Bishop Thomas Pabraki of Springfield, Illinois. Your Excellency, thank you for your time. Hello, good to be with you. First off, why issue this statement now? What prompted it? Well, it was prompted by uh, inquiries uh, that uh, followed after the uh, Senator uh, Durbin's um, vote, along with 13 other Catholic senators, against the um, Pain-Capable Unborn Children Protection Act. And it was a bill that passed the House, uh, and uh, Gov uh, President Trump promised he would have signed it. Unfortunately, it didn't pass the Senate. And uh, the, pre the uh, chairman of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops uh, Pro-Life Committee, Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York, issued a very strong statement saying that it was appalling uh, that that mm -hmm. bill did not pass the uh, Senate. But I was getting inquiries uh, because of uh, the fact that Senator Durbin, who is a Catholic who lives here in Springfield, voted against it. And people were asking uh, about his status and uh, you know, whether or not he was permitted to receive communion. And so I issued a statement simply that, first of all, agreed with Cardinal Dolan. I think it's appalling mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the Senate failed to pass that act, especially appalling that 14 Catholic senators voted against it. And uh, so that's it's really a shame. But uh, in terms of uh, uh, Senator Durbin's background, this is actually a rather uh, long history going back to 2004. So 14 years ago, he was told by his pastor, then Monsignor Kevin Van, uh, who is now the bishop of Orange, California. He was the pastor here in Springfield of Senator Durbin's parish, Blessed Sacrament. And back then in 2004, uh, Monsignor Van told him that he would be reticent to give him communion because of his long record of, on abortion. And uh, that decision was upheld by my predecessor, Bishop George Lucas, now the Archbishop of Omaha. And so I'm uh, simply saying that I've continued that. I've spoken with the senator about that shortly after I was appointed to be bishop here in 2010 and uh, indicated there would be no change in that status unless there was some change in his policy. And unfortunately, he has not changed that at all. Your Excellency, you say this provision is intended not to punish, but to bring about a change of heart. Can you expand on that? Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, and it's very timely, I, I think, and that we're in the season of Lent when all of us are called to have a change of heart and, and really uh, to turn more closely to the Lord. Uh, it's not intended to be a punishment in, in the sense that uh, perpetually depriving him of Holy Communion. In fact, I would love to have him have a change of heart and come back to Holy Communion. There's nothing more that I would rather see than he would come back into full communion with the church. So in that sense, it's not intended as a punishment, but more as an incentive to say, really look into your heart, have a change of heart, uh, go to confession and come back uh, and we'll receive you back into full communion in the church. What can our viewers, we as pro-lifers, take away from that? How should we interact with people who hold pro-abortion views so that we don't shame them, but prompt a conversion of heart as you're mm -hmm. speaking about? Well, first of all, pray for them. Uh, that's very important, and uh, you know that the uh, the senators uh, that voted uh, against uh, this bill uh, that would have protected unborn children. I think for just pray for them by name, and I think that's uh, the first starting point. The other would be uh, to write to them and to let them know um, your opinions on that, and write letters that are not uh, not angry or not hostile, but writing letters that are really uh, seeking conversion, and just mm -hmm. uh, tell them how disappointed you are in their in their vote and hope that they will uh, have a change of heart. And that's very important for 
uh, for voters to do that because, uh, you know, uh, in, in many ways, a politician looks at, at, at a bishop as simply another vote, just one vote. Uh, but if they hear from a number of voters, then that's their constituency that they have to answer to. Absolutely. As you've mentioned, Senator Durbin was just one of 14 Catholic senators to vote against right. the pain capable bill. Do you think we will see more bishops follow your action? Well, I, I don't know. Back in 2004, the bishops of the United States issued a, a document on Catholics and political life, and we said it's really up to each individual bishop because there's a variety of circumstances that have to be taken into account. Uh, Canon 915 talks about those who obstinately persist and manifest grave sin, and those are a number of qualifications that limit the, the basic right. We have a right to the sacrament, and so it's a limitation on that right so that we bishops, priests, deacons, or extraordinary ministers of the Holy Communion don't act in an arbitrary way. So it's got to be obstinate uh, and persistent and manifest and, and serious, gravely serious. And so all of those things in the case of Senator Durbin uh, have been met because this has been going on for years. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, he's met those qualifications. Um, but in other cases, if this is perhaps the first time, uh, I don't know what the other senators, uh, what their records have been, but I think an individual bishop would have to look at that record and have a conversation uh, with that politician and, and see what possibility there would be to bring about a change of heart. And finally, Your Excellency, if Senator Durbin happens to watch this interview, what do you want to say to him? I'd say, Senator Durbin, the church uh, loves you, God loves you, and he wants you to come back uh, to, to the church and, and to do everything that you can to protect uh, uh, unborn children uh, and, and uh, really uh, look deeply into your heart and ask the Lord uh, to help you to have the grace to go back to where you started out. You know, Senator Durbin started as a pro-life politician here in central Illinois. Uh, come back to your roots and, uh, and serve the Lord and uh, his people in this way. Bishop Thomas Paprocki of the Diocese of Springfield in Illinois, thank you for your time again, Your Excellency. You're welcome. God bless you.